Evening one and all, welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show Worldwide here on the Vita Television Network. Happy you guys have joined us this evening. Happy Halloween to all you ghosts and ghouls out there. Hopefully, you guys are going to be able to stick around before you head out and do a little trick-or-treating. Trick-or-treating. Evening one and all, welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show Worldwide here on the Vita Television Network. Happy Halloween to all you ghosts and ghouls out there. Hopefully you guys are going to be able to take in the show before you hit the streets with the kids and get uh, all that candy into the house. We have a lot to cover tonight. Uh, coming up in the second uh, segment of the program, Mary Ramirez will be here and we'll talk about some things happening in the popular culture that caught her attention this week. Meantime, here's how you get in touch with us. ChrisSalcedo.com, C-H-R-I-S-S-A-L-C-E-D-O.com. Not only voicemail. But email, you can drop off there. Now, keep in mind, you drop a voicemail off, you drop an email off, they could be used here on the program. So just keep it G-rated, not that it's an issue with this audience. Uh, on Twitter, at Chris Salcedo TX, at C-H-R-I-S-S-A-L-C-E-D-O uh, for instantaneous access. By the way, I want you guys to keep on the lookout. Going to get Ruben Navarrete Jr. back in here. We're going to start a series of discussions about illegal and legal immigration into the United States. You guys want to stick around for that. Meantime, let's get caught up on some of the news before we get into some of the, uh, the pop culture discussion next segment. That's President Donald Trump, and he is feeling a wee bit vindicated, and he has every right, as now the script has flipped, ladies and gentlemen. It turns out the collusion that was going on in the last election cycle and even before with Russia was not among Republicans. It was among Democrats. Well, I think it's very sad what they've done with this fake dossier. It was made up, and I understand they paid a tremendous amount of money, and Hillary Clinton always denied it. The Democrats always denied it. And now only because it's going to come out in a court case, they said, yes, they did it, they admitted it, and they were embarrassed by it. But I think it's a disgrace. It's just really, a very, it's, a very sad, it's a very sad commentary on politics in this country. Yeah, it is. It is. But look, there's an axiom I want you all to know from the Chris Salcedo show, and it is this. Liberals, by their very nature, they tend to project attributes on others that they themselves have in abundance. And uh, that is what happened here. Uh, I have told you before about the long history Democrats have of colluding with enemies of the United States, in particular, Russian enemies, Soviet Union style enemies. They have a long tradition in the Democrat Party of sidling up to these people because if you think about it, the Democrat Party, they their roots are based in totalitarian rule over a population. They want to tell they want government to be able to tell you what to do. That's why Bernie Sanders is out there talking about how he wants democratic socialism. You guys know what the, the difference between Socialism and democratic socialism. Democratic socialism allows you to vote away your rights before the government takes them from you and never gives them back. Okay, there, there, there's no other referendum after that. The government will say, oh, well, uh, shall we vote on this again? No, they, they never will. Democratic socialism gives you one vote and then you vote all this power into into government's hands and then you lose all of your rights. Uh, that's what Bernie Sanders is all about. And really, that's that's the only difference between democratic socialism and socialism. But there's a long history of the Democrat Party's love and admiration and desire to achieve what the Chinese have achieved, what the Cubans achieved, what uh, the Soviet Union achieved, complete domination over a population. That's who they are. So anyway, Donald Trump is, is upset about this fake dossier, the dossier that was produced that showed that, well, that indicated that he was the one collaborating with the Russians or his team and nothing could have been further from the truth. And as a matter of fact, the dossier was commissioned by Fusion GPS by going to the Russians. They went to the Russians. You know who paid for it? You know who paid for this fake Russian dossier? Hillary Clinton and the Democrat National Committee. Ta-da! As I said, Democrats and liberals were often project attributes onto others that they themselves have in abundance. Donald Trump uh, spoke a little bit more about something else that's kind of entwined into all of this. I think the uranium sale to Russia and the way it was done 
so underhanded with tremendous amounts of money being passed. I actually think that's Watergate modern age. Okay, Uh, for those of you who have not been paying that close attention, let me tell you what happened. Back in 2010, Uranium One, which is a Russian company, and of course a lot of the companies over in Russia have direct ties with the Kremlin. Uranium One decided it wanted to buy 20% of America's uranium stockpile. Now, for those of you who don't know what uranium is, it is the primary ingredient in our nuclear weapons. Nuclear energy, too, but nuclear weapons. Now, you guys tell me, why would anyone who is pro-American want to give to an enemy and an adversary, the Russians, 20% of our fissile material? Doesn't make any sense, does it? No, it doesn't make any sense to me. Now, don't forget, Hillary Clinton also saw a sizable donation come into her her uh, foundation from the Russians. And Bill Clinton was able to demand triple, triple his speaking fee over in Russia right around the time this deal was getting negotiated. And don't forget, Barack Obama approved it. Do you guys remember a little side note here? Do you remember that in the 2012 debate between resident Barack Obama and Governor Mitt Romney, Governor Mitt Romney rightly pointed out that our number one geopolitical foe in the world was Russia. And Barack Obama savaged him, mocked him. Let me be clear. Oh, the 80s want their, uh, their, their foreign policy back. Turns out Mitt Romney was right. And I think that Barack Obama knew he was right because Barack Obama was covering up for this terrible deal that gave a strategic advantage away from America and to the Russians on his watch. And Hillary Clinton profited from it. Peter Schweitzer, over my left shoulder. Uh, There was a guy that was put under gag order when all this was going down about the nuclear nuclear transfer of fissile material to the Russians. He has been under gag order until, until the present day. And Peter Schweitzer is saying, well, that ought not be. When this uranium sale was approved in 2010 that Hillary Clinton, among others, signed off on, there was actually an FBI criminal probe at that time uh, involving kickbacks and other schemes involving this Russian company. Okay, who was in charge of the FBI at that time? FBI probe investigating bribery into this, and they actually found bribery into this. Who was running the FBI? Robert Mueller, the the man who is currently looking into into, uh, Russia uh, interference into our elections. Now, he came out with his first indictment. We'll get into that uh, probably coming up in tomorrow's show. But at any rate, uh, more from Peter Schweitzer. Uh, And in fact, involved in that is a witness, an American businessman under a gag order who says that he heard and has information about efforts to bribe the Clintons involving the deal. There is absolutely no reason, I think, any justification for this guy to be under a gag order anymore. Um, Let him testify before Congress. Let him go to the media and tell his story. And then people can decide uh, what they think about what he has to say. Well, finally, Trump's attorney general, Jeff Sessions, allowed this to happen. He will be allowed to testify. You guys keep on the lookout for that. Uh, We'll keep out for the lookout, too. We'll make sure once he does testify, we'll make sure that he is here and let you know uh, what he uh, what he says about what the Clintons did. Leon Panetta is a strange cat. He's an old style Democrat. Was a congressman at one point. And he actually rose up in some of the ranks uh, to appointed positions inside of the Obama administration. At one point, he ran the CIA. Here he is talking with Wolf Blitzer and actually CNN stumbling on some some rare fairness, actually saying a, a cross word to Hillary Clinton. Listen to their discussion. It's quite interesting. So it's very awkward. How could both the chair of the DNC and the Clinton campaign not know about these payments? Well, it's obviously something that uh, the Intelligence Committee is going to have to have to look at. Um, you know, uh, knowing uh, presidential campaigns, they're big operations, and somehow the uh, left hand may not know what the right hand is doing. What they're talking about, folks, is now that it came out, the Democrat National Committee and Hillary Clinton's campaign paid for this fake dossier. 
Uh, nobody knows. Nobody knows where who approved the money. Nobody's taking credit for it. You know how much money it was? Well, originally it was $9.6 million. Now we're hearing it's upward of $12 million. Now, I don't know about you and your house, folks, but do you misplace $12 million? Don't know where it came from? <laughs> now, now, granted, this is how Democrats run government. I understand. But I have a sneaking suspicion somebody approved this. Nobody, nobody wants to take credit for it. Uh, and that could be the case here. I really do think that uh, the committee is going to have to uh, get into this, uh, determine just exactly what happened, who knew. That's Leon Panetta, folks, a well-known Democrat on CNN calling for an investigation into what Hillary Clinton and the DNC, what they paid for in that fake Trump dossier. And the real important thing here is, don't forget, that Trump dossier was used as allegedly as the basis for the Mueller investigation and for an FBI investigation into Donald Trump. It was completely fake. And the question now is, did James Comey, the former FBI director, did he know it was fake and use it as a pretense to launch an investigation into Donald Trump? And that's something we've got to know. I mentioned uh, illegality earlier. This is the uh, Hannity Show on Fox News Channel. And Greg Jarrett is one of the legal eagles who appears on there quite often. Uh, Jarrett is very good. He's a lawyer. And apparently when the Democrats and Hillary Clinton's campaign put out this expenditure to get this report from Fusion GPS to the tune of, well, again, $9.6 million or $12 million is what we're hearing now. And nobody, as I said, nobody wants to claim credit for it. You know what they wrote down on their election disclosure? They wrote down it was a it was a campaign expense. They didn't specify that it was opposition research to Fusion GPS. Why? Many are saying because they wanted to cover it up. Now, if you mislabel where your campaign money is going on these declaration sheets, it's a crime. Hillary Clinton and the Democrat National Committee committed a crime, but not just one, could be several crimes. 13 potential <laughs> crimes committed by Hillary Clinton. She could be charged uh, for six anti-corruption statutes. They're all felonies. She could also be charged with racketeering for using her charity as a criminal enterprise. And then you've got all of the email crimes, two of them under the Espionage Act and two additional. And now this latest dossier information, you can't pay a foreign national relative to a political campaign. And it appears she also and the DNC hid it in their disclosure reports, which could also be criminally charged. Now, what is the difference between what Donald Trump Jr. did by taking a meeting with Vianetskaya and what the Democrats and Hillary Clinton did? The difference is Hillary Clinton and the Democrat National Committee paid, paid Fusion GPS with ties to the Russian government. That, my friends, is illegal. You can't do that. So we will continue to watch what's going on with this, folks. And uh, it's going to heat up over the next couple of days, I can assure you. Tomorrow in the program, we will detail for you these charges that came out uh, from Bob Mueller, uh, the first indictment leveled in his so-called Trump-Russia investigation, or just the Russia interference investigation. Mary Ramirez, up next, Chris Salcedo Show Worldwide. Be right back.
Welcome back, everybody. It's Chris Salcedo Show Worldwide here on the Vita Television Network. Joined over that, over my right shoulder by that lady, Mary Ramirez. Welcome back, lady. Hello. Nice to be back. Not in a car this time, so uh, we don't have a moving camera going on. Last time, in case, you know, this has been a couple of weeks since she's been back, folks. In case you missed that episode, she was actually moving in a car. What were you guys doing on vacation or something? No, I had a brother getting married, so we were heading um, out of Chicago into Indiana. Oh. Got us mid mid road trip. <laughs> Very nice. Well, heading out of Chicago is always a good idea. Uh, Safely, it's a safe idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are we uh, writing about this week? Well, Chris, Halloween is upon us, mm -hmm. and so you know, of course, everyone's looking at what they're going to dress up as. We've got my daughter all set with her flamingo costume, and um, I, I came across this article, and, and again, it's 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 Halloween. You're dressing up for Halloween, pretty innocuous. But right. this article written over at uh, Cosmo, which I think is a, a branch of Redbook. But anyway, um, imploring parents not to let their children dress up as Moana. Um, and Moana is, if you're not familiar, those in the audience are not familiar. Disney. Uh, the, Disney movie, right? Disney. Yeah. Exactly. It's the Polynesian princess. Um, really cute movie. My daughter loves it. Um, but imploring parents not to let their children dress up as her if they're white, because doing that would be cultural oh. appropriate. And I want to read this line. I'm going to read it because I want to get it right. He or she, which they don't identify themselves in the article, they just write under the header of editor, right? which is so brave, um, quote, to pretend to be a racial, ethnic, or religious minority when you are not makes light of their history and reinforces a deeply problematic power dynamic wherein white people use, then discard, Pieces of cultures they have subjugated for centuries just because they can. Right. It's Halloween. What it's, I know it's for a it's Halloween, but what happened to imitation being the sincerest form of flattery? When I was eight years old, Pocahontas came out, and Pocahontas was the movie. And I realized, yes, it's not historically accurate and all that jazz, but it was the movie. <laughs> okay. You know and what? I, when I came out, it was Aladdin. I mean, uh, I mean, come on. So, so we can't we can't dress up as uh, Arab princes or princesses because we might what offend Arabs? Is that the whole idea? <laughs> Apparently not. And just a quick sidebar, quick side note on Aladdin. You know, they're doing the live action of that, and, and some people were getting upset because there was non Arabic characters that were being or people that were being cast in this movie. When in fact, in the original Thousand and One Arabian Nights, he was Chinese, not Arabian. But Oops. anyway, Oops. nevertheless, yeah. Um, so I you know, begged my mom for the costume. I got this costume. She she sewed it for me. And, you know, beyond Halloween and beyond that movie, that movie prompted me to read about Pocahontas. I'm eight years old, prompted me to learn about her tribe, the Pahlavan tribe, prompted me to learn everything that she did in conjunction with the settlers that had come over. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have been prompted to learn that if it were not for the movie, which got me interested in the character in the first place. That's what I'm hoping for my kid, that she watches this movie and goes, oh, that's kind of cool. That's a culture I don't know much about. Let me look Let me look at it, right? But in this person's mind, my my letting my half-white, because you know, she is half-white, half-white kid dress up as Moana is tantamount to, you know, letting her sit and look at pictures of the KKK lynchings and laugh. <sighs> You okay. know, you know why this is all happening, right? You understand why this is all happening. Well, of course. It's to advance this idea that all of a sudden we've elected a non-Democrat. We've, we've elected a non-liberal. And that means all of a sudden everybody has to be ashamed of being white. And, and because we all know that the left wing in this country has said, well, if you're a person of color, you must be a left wing extremist and you must hate America. The NFL really? is proving the NFL is proving that on a daily basis. But don't get me started on that. But the, the whole reason why we're having to endure this nonsense is because liberals and Democrats can't take no for an answer. And it's funny, Chris, that you should mention that, because in this article, she says uh, this is the end of one of her sentences or she, her his sentence. Um, but anyway, and she references, of course, the one that's that's in the White House. Uh, he is a, a racist a-hole. And you're exactly right. Because, of course, there was no racism. There was no nothing when, when Barack Obama was in office. No, that wasn't a problem. You know, and here, and this is my core problem with this article. It's not just the annoyance at the fact that someone's taking a perfectly innocuous holiday, which was, by the way, has its origins in the church, which is also probably politically incorrect. Someone taking this perfectly innocuous holiday and, and, and ruining it. My problem with this is this person is helping to, to perpetuate further division because it's teaching my kid and anybody else 
that you don't look at somebody based on their personality, who they are. You look at them based on their color and nothing else. Yeah. Well, you know what? It is it is antithetical to the lessons that were tried to be taught to the na- nation by Dr. Martin Luther King. You know, and it's and it's and you hit on something I didn't want to let go. The reason why we can't have our holidays anymore is because liberals and Democrats are upset. That means nobody can be happy in the United States of America. So they're going to ruin everything. They're going to ruin Halloween. They're going to ruin the movies. They're going to ruin television. They're going to ruin the National Football League. They're going to ruin everything that we took joy in, anything that's Americana. They're going to ruin because they can't tell us what to do anymore. And they're they're ticked off. And that's critical, ruining joy, because what, what is it? Joy is something that brings us together. Football brought us together regardless of background and, and, and religious origin or color mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, uh, movies bring us together. Holidays bring us together regardless of what we all individually believe. Mm. So, you know, yeah, it's almost as if it's, it's like when you're a kid and you don't get what you want. You can't play with that toy. So you decide that no one can. So you break it. <laughs> it's exactly what I'm sorry. I mean, it's, it's, that's what's happening. If they can't have it, if they can't be in charge and tell us what to do, well, then nobody, nobody can have a good time. It's the mentality. Look, I got to tell you, it's the mentality of the libs. It is the mentality of liberals out there. If they can't run your life, they don't want you to enjoy your life. And the only way they're going to give you a moment's peace is if you elect them and let them extort money out of your pocket and and lord over your life. I wanted to see I wanted to see if you saw something because I wanted to get a female's perspective on this. Uh, seeing as how you are, uh, you're educating me on something I had no idea about coming up on Halloween. Um, Ellen, you know who Ellen is, right? Hi, Daryl. Ellen is a rather famous, an alleged comedian, and she's rather famous for being, uh, well, gay. Mm-hmm. And she, uh, Katy Perry last week had a birthday. Yeah. And <laughs> Ellen has a, a rather now infamous picture of her looking at the assets, shall we say, of Katy Perry, staring right there like this. And it, it, and, and below this, the neckline. Yeah, below the neckline, exactly. It was an old picture, but Ellen retweeted it as, as a joke. She is now being labeled in this current environment with Weinstein and all the liberals who were have been conducting their war on women um, – Within this era now, now Ellen is being labeled a sexist. Uh, you as a woman, what do you think about this? You know, I have to tell you that is in all the different opinions that I've heard about that tweet going on. That's the first time I've actually heard that take that she's being labeled as a sexist. In fact, I was. Well, let me take that back. I have heard it, but not from the left. I haven't heard the left labeling her. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't us. It wasn't conservatives. It wasn't Republicans. It was actually it was left wingers who said that's just not that's just not right. That's well, just not right. That's too sexy in, in this current environment. And I said, welcome, Ellen. I, I even tweeted her. I said, welcome, Ellen, to left wing crazies making your life miserable. Oh, right, because it, and it was supposed to be a joke. It was. It was a joke. It was silly. a joke. I don't it think was it was. Joke, it wasn't right? necessary. It wasn't funny, but I mean, it, it was supposed to be a joke. Right. No, I mean, whatever. It's she's not. It's clearly Katy Perry didn't care. No. Katy Perry was along for the joke. I mean, yeah. It, it, from from my perspective, whatever. I don't care. Um, you know, it, it is interesting though if you look at the double standard because if a, <laughs> if a male actor or comedian or whatever had tweeted this out in light of all the Weinstein whatever um you know that would be it would, it would just be interesting to see what the reaction is well but i have i have one more for you i have one more for you the former president of the united states george h w bush oh, gosh, yeah. was caught <laughs> look look at her look at her reaction oh ooh. uh george h w bush was caught on camera uh, touching the derriere of a woman. Yeah. And apparently this is a habit of the former presidents where he says, he says a rather crude and, and, and actually not funny joke. And he touches women like that as part of the joke. Now mm-hmm. the, 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 the former president's office is saying he means nothing by it. It's just a, it's, it's harmless uh, joke. It's fun. But in this, and now three women have come out and said that 
the former president, George H.W. Bush, has done this to to them. What is okay. your take on all that? Oh, gosh. I mean, I don't... <laughs> No, I don't think it's appropriate for someone to touch someone else's derriere ever, like male, female. I don't care. Without permission. It, it, I, it's right. <laughs> <That's> without permission. <laughs> um, but, you know, on the other hand, you know, he is, what is he? I mean, is, are these allegations current? Are they former? I mean, because what is he, 90? Well, no, you know, they're, so they're, they're, they're old. I think they're older pictures. Okay, well then that's they're, 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 I mean maybe I about a, with... well I don't 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 quote me on this but I think they're a couple of years old. But again, okay. these are these are old pictures being viewed in the current context and in the current environment and that's right. how people are being judged and the efforts are being made to destroy them. Well, and I think maybe getting at the point that you were making originally with Ellen, um we are so hypersensitive as a society that nothing ever can be seen as a joke or funny or or, or oh shoot you know what I, I stepped over the line i said something too much again i'm not i'm not justifying anyone touching anyone's rear end without permission ever uh, yes um but i hardly i i don't think i don't think that George H. W. bush is a sexual predator i don't either but no. and it, it makes me mad again because um, just like this article that i was talking about makes um, you know, sort of takes the focus away from real racism. That takes the focus away from real sexual predators. And I don't think that I don't think Ellen is a sexual predator either. No, of course she's not. No. I mean, I don't. Would I take that picture? No, it, it's not. <laughs> no. But, well, you're not. Okay? You're not an alleged comedian, and you also don't swing the way Ellen Ellen swings. I, uh, no. uh, yeah. I, look, uh, I want to get the name of. <laughs> What? I, I, I want to get the name of your piece out there so folks can go uh, jump on Twitter and read what you have to say. Well, the title's a little strong this week, of course, because of the, you know, the language in the piece, which I you know, slipped out earlier. Um, so parents, <laughs> don't teach your kids to be a-holes oh. in the name of political correctness and racial penance. Got and that it. is up on blog of futurefree.com, and I'll tweet it out after this segment. Yes, and we'll put it, uh, uh, retweet that on the Chris Salcedo Show Twitter account as well. Mary Ramirez, um, rather uh, saucy, uh, saucy language this week uh, from you. Uh, we will. Um... <laughs> hey, it's in the article. We'll, we'll, we'll clean it up next week, folks, when we have her back. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much, Chris. Oops, not going yet. I've edited this this uh, piece of this uh, of the Chris Salcedo show so much. What's one more edit, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, we forgot to do our phrase of the week. Mary Ramirez tries to stump me with a little bit of Spanish because I'm not fluent and and she is. All right, hit me with your best shot. All right, Chris. This week's phrase is una foto vale mil palabras. Uh a picture is worth a thousand words. Bingo, two in a row. Look at that. You know what gave that away? <laughs> I know what I know what mil is in Spanish, and I know what palabras is in Spanish. So that that I'll kind of the yeah. So I very very good. You know this is good stuff. This is good stuff. You know what? And I know I know because of our interactions here the last couple of weeks, I think I know more Spanish than I give myself credit for. I think you do. You've gotten your two for three. You I know, mean, not bad. And a lot of my relatives are always, oh, que lastima, que lastima. They, yeah, because they think I'm a, I'm a waste of a perfectly good Latino. But th that, that is not the case. You see, Tia, I do know a little Spanish. You see? Okay. Uh, Mary Ramirez, everybody. Now we're going to really say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Chris. Okay, kids. That's going to do it for the Chris Salcedo Show Worldwide. If you want to get in touch with the show... <laughs> After this humdinger of an episode, why, why wouldn't you want to? ChrisSalcedo.com. Drop there uh, uh, an email or a voicemail or instantaneous access at Chris Salcedo TX at C H R I S S A L C E D O T X as in Texas. Have yourselves a wonderful night back here tomorrow for the Chris Salcedo Show worldwide on the Vita Television Network. See you then. <laughs>